All right, so everybody's asking Bitcoin, is it and has it made its last move here before we start to see a retracement? A lot of people are following Bitcoin up the charts, so we're going to get into that with you guys today with a special guest. It's going to be a good one. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back to the Tech Path. I want to thank our sponsor today, and that is CoinLedger. If you guys are looking at getting into crypto taxes now, nobody really wants to do this, but it's things you have to do. And CoinLedger is one of those that I really like because it has a, an unbelievable amount of integration, so it's very easy to use, and it also can tie into a lot of the platforms that you're out there using in your crypto landscape. So make sure and check them out. We've left a link in the description below. You can get a little bit of a discount there and use it if you guys are uh, looking at, you know, trying to make it a little easier on your taxes. Let's jump into it today, and that is with Ms. Mr. Mark Yusko coming in from Morgan Creek Capital, founder and CEO over there. Great to have you back. Hey, Paul, great to see you. Happy Lunar New Year. We were talking about that off air. <laughs> Exciting. To I like be it. You're the rabbit, which is my year. So this is my big year. Oh, uh, man. So be about that. There you go. This could be, this is good. This That's a good sign, you know, uh, eight, 88 sign. all the way. I yeah, like absolutely. it. So, Mark, we haven't talked in a little bit uh, and a lot of lots happened. Of course, you know, in the crypto world, five minutes is um, like a year. <laughs> so when Wait. you look at what's happening right now with Bitcoin, we've got a lot of people looking at still the recessionary scenarios that may loom in on this. This was an article coming in talking about still a 61% chance of recession this year. According to some you know, economists, we have some people still uh, maybe a little bit more bullish. We had uh, Jeff Ross on. Uh, we also had Lynn Alden on here recently, both of which leaned not necessarily heavy bullish, but we're in the camp of seeing some good signals here. What are you feeling from a macro position as one of the top investors in the space? So a couple of things. So on the macro side, uh, I don't think we're out of the woods. I, I don't think we're on the precipice of, of some calamity either. You know, I, I've right. said for probably the last year that this recession, and I actually believe we're in the recession, right? Mm -hmm. I, I think they'll call it retrospectively. They'll say it probably started, you know, March, April last year, and we're probably closer to the end than we are to the beginning. Um, but it's a shallow recession, very, right. very similar in my mind to the 01 recession, right? 01 didn't even really feel like a recession other than the fact that things got exacerbated by the lockdowns following 9-11. If yeah. you go back to 2001, it was, it was interesting in that we had the tech bubble starting to bust. Yeah. Uh, first quarter GDP was negative. Second quarter GDP was marginally positive. Third quarter was negative, exacerbated by 9-11. And then fourth quarter was positive. The whole year, GDP was actually up 1%. You know, we're still waiting on fourth quarter number. With the fourth quarter number, last year is probably going to be a positive number. But we still had two negative quarters, January, February. Third and fourth quarter weren't real in the so what I mean by that is most of the GDP was simply the resale of the oil from the SPR, which is just a bogus way to create right. uh, GDP, but is what it is. It, it's, like, it's like the broken window fallacy of hurricanes, right? Hurricane hits, they don't count the destruction against GDP, but they count the rebuilding for GDP. It doesn't make any sense. Exactly. It's like yeah. retail sales numbers. Retail sales numbers do two things that are just silly. One, they don't adjust for population growth. If there's more people buying stuff, sales go up. You have to adjust for that, but they don't. Second thing, they don't adjust for uh, like price of gas, right? Price of gas goes up and so retail sales are up. No, that's just a price increase. That's not a good thing. I may buy less mm -hmm. gas because it costs more. So little things like that drive me, drive me crazy. But that's a long winded way of saying, uh, Data is bad, right? Leading economic, leading economic indicators have been tumbling. Lynn probably talked about that. Yep. Um, and, you know, you think about the future. Uh, we got bad demographic trends, right? We got a lot of people from our age cohort, the boomers, that are turning 65 to 85 and starting to retire. And, and that's, that's negative for productivity. It's negative for working age population growth. GDP equals working age population growth plus GDP, both of those are sub 1%. Uh, 
So other than, you know, cheating, like by selling oil in the SPR, it's going to be tough to get greater than 2% GDP. So it's going to feel not very good. You throw on top of that, the Fed continuing to tighten. Everybody says, oh, they're, they're pivoting. Well, they haven't pivoted yet. They right. slowed the pacing tightening from 75 to 50. And now people are saying, oh, it's going to be 25 this month. Maybe, maybe. Um, we'll see. But even that is still hiking. That's not cutting. And right. so I'm, I think the macro is still a headwind. Is, is that now on crypto, I think we're in the middle of one of the great short squeezes of all time. And it's not mm. just crypto, it's everywhere, right? If you look at this, this month, right? First three weeks of, of January, the crappier the company and crappy is a technical term, the crappier the company, the more money they lose, the worse the business, the more it's up. Peloton, Zoom, um, GameStop, AMC, 60, 70, 80% this month. Forget, you know, over any meaningful period of time. And we're talking three weeks. Now, the problem is, you know, when you're down 95% and then you rally 80%, you're still down, you know, in the 90s. So it's, it's not really that good. But um, there's a interesting thing going on this year, Paul, that hasn't happened for a long time. So years ago, there used to be something called the January effect, where people would sell their losers in December for the tax loss. Right. And they had to wait 30 days to buy them back. So in January, all the stuff that was horrible the year before did really, really well. And it was known as the January effect. And it was really small cap and micro cap names by and large. And that, that's where the excess returns for the year came from. Well, they changed the tax laws a number of years ago that made mutual funds sell by October 31st, not December 31st. And so the January effect got shifted to November. So if you look in the middle of November, just about every year, you have this two, three week period where the crappiest companies, right? The things that were just horrible all year did really well. And you didn't get the January effect. Well, this year, mm -hmm. last year was so bad. Like, Everything was down. Stocks were down. Bonds were down. Small cap, large cap, international, and emerging markets. Everything was down. Crypto. So the regular folks actually did some tax loss selling. So those tax loss sales were of the horrible companies like Peloton and Zoom and AMC. Right. And they now are rallying in, in a huge short squeeze. And Bitcoin, I, I think I have this right, um, Binance just had over a $500 million collapse of shorts on their platform. So mm -hmm. we are way oversold. I mean, like, I mean, I'm sorry, way overbought. We are as overbought as I've ever seen Bitcoin. So I still believe we're in crypto spring, crypto winter's over. We got through Hurricane Sam, which I didn't anticipate. And that's where we went. You know, we were at kind of 18,000. And that's what I thought was the bottom. And then we had Hurricane Sam that took us down to 15. And now, you know, when we got back to 18, that to me is, is spring. Spring is choppy, ugly, not really up and to the right. Up and to the right is summer. Summer's still three, four, five months off in anticipation of the halving. But, right. you know, so could we have a retracement back to 18 before we head? Uh, you know, we're not, you know, there are a lot of people saying we're going to be new all time highs this year. Possible possible. That's interesting. Um, definitely likely in early 24. Um, here's an interesting stat. Every halving adds a zero, meaning it increases the market cap of the Bitcoin asset by tenfold. So we went from one to 10 in the first halving. Then we went from 10 to 100, went from 100 mm -hmm. to 1,000, went to 10,000 in the last one. And I think, you know, January, February next year, we go to, to the 100K. And, uh, and we'll surpass that because then the next one after that, you know, brace yourselves, right, is a million four years later mm -hmm. in 2028. Um, people say, that could never happen. Mm -hmm. No, it will happen. It, yeah. It's just going to take time. Yeah, I think there, you know, there's a lot of uh, speculation now, of course, around this current run. I mean, if you think about it, if you look back at the low of, you know, 15 and where Bitcoin has moved to outside of the FTX scenario, back to your point, 
A uh, couple of things that people are still kind of pointing to is that this potentially could be a bull trap, you know, so a lot more stronger elements. And back to your point is a, maybe one of the greatest short squeezes out there. But it does have an interesting scenario about it. One of the things we've watched with Bitcoin, if you look back at just how we track sentiment, we had not seen Bitcoin rise um, above where we have two sentiment charts. One is is kind of general sentiment and, and the other sentiment is a little bit more um, pointed, so it's more intent. Yep. And that that lower layer of sentiment we call amplification tells us that, which it usually indicates around price action, is that it's crossing, meaning we're starting to see where it's actually outperforming general sentiment. Uh, yep. Which gets to your point, you know, where we might have overbought situations brewing right now within Bitcoin and Ethereum and, and some other uh, leading assets yep. about that. With that being the case, um, and you look at it, I was looking at this, uh, this was just a quick tweet here, uh, pump full, fueled by liquidations. You can kind of see, I'm going to zoom up on this, just showing you where these liquidations are occurring. But the point being, uh, this is around where we've kind of looked at it, but some people still say that liquidity is, is there up to around 25.5, which still, that's a very strong move. When you look at that sure. based on what's happening with GBTC, What's happening with Genesis and DCG, um, you know, which is kind of the one concerning factor right now. Does that worry you at all or do you feel like that's priced into the market? Uh, definitely is a worry. I don't think it's priced in. Uh, look, if 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 we if we, well, I saw we I don't I don't own any of it, but if they uh, if Barry and, and Grayscale are forced to liquidate GBTC, hmm. which you know, there's there's a bunch of shareholders that are you know, kind of coming together to try to force that issue, right? Closed end funds can get taken over by their shareholders and can yeah. be forced to liquid. Now the the bar is a little higher with GBTC, as I understand it, with the structure. Like a lot of closed end funds, you only need about 10, 11 percent of shareholders to get a mm -hmm. special vote. I think the 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 number here is higher than that, maybe even as high as 50. I don't I don't know that number exactly. But but even so, um, if and that's capital I capital F, if GBTC trust was forced to close and we basically sold ten billion, now probably closer to to eleven or twelve billion dollars of a BTC, that's about ten percent of available circulating supply, right? Not right. total supply, but remember sixty five seventy percent of Bitcoin hasn't moved in three years, it's yeah. not going to move. So the, the the free float is what we have to talk about. And GBTC owns, as I understand it, about 10% of the free float. Mm -hmm. Now, if that were liquidated, everyone says, oh, it'd be horrible. It'd be, you know, be straight down. Well, remember, for every seller, there's a buyer. And I think there's a lot of money waiting to get back in. And so I think it would be bad short term, but I don't think it'd be a disaster. And I think we could, could handle it. Now, I also think Barry has said, you can take GBTC when you pry it from my cold dead hands. Okay, that, that's pretty strong. So I, I don't think it's gonna get liquidated. So if it doesn't get liquidated, I, I, I think we're, we're in pretty good shape. Now, when I say pretty good shape, I mean, I think this is a short squeeze. I think we'll have a retracement, a pullback. I think it's still positive. And short of a liquidation of GBTC, I think we are in the beginnings of the accumulation phase again, right? In the four-year cycle, we have crypto winter, spring, summer, and fall. We were in winter. Now we're in spring. Summer's still coming. And summer is when you get the big parabolic move. And then fall, you get the kind of consolidation and, and heading back into winter. Um, so I think all that is good. The, the, the one thing that, that I do struggle a little bit with is, uh, the technicals versus the fundamentals. So mm -hmm. a lot of people are looking at technicals and, and yeah, the technicals look good. You got, you got a rising, you know, 50 day breaking through the, the declining 200 day. That's a big positive. We got a, a momentum thrust out of the, the bottom, um, but that that oversold RSI is is troubling, right? If I mean, 
our thing about RSI, it, it doesn't have any plateaus, right? Never, ever, ever does it go up into the 70s and stay right. there. It yeah. goes up higher than you think, and then it goes back yeah. down. I mean, it's a oscillating pattern for a reason. So um, that so 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 there's there's those. But the the thing that that is more uh, I guess concerning for me is the fundamental part, right? That what Sam at all, and again, I don't think it was Sam or Caroline. I think they are useful idiots of some sure. much smarter, bigger, you know, sinister plot. Um, I, I think that damaged credibility and confidence. And, and that's what new markets need. If you think yeah. of, of anything, think about the first time you went to put your credit card into the internet. How scary yeah. that was. How <laughs> uncomfortable you were with the technology. Was it really encrypted? Would it get stolen? Was I safe? Now, we don't think about it. We don't. We throw our credit card around everywhere and no big deal because now we're comfortable with the tech. And yet when there are breaches still to this day, when Visa gets breached and a bunch of data gets stolen, people say, oh, I'm not going to use my credit card for a while. We'll look right And past so it. damaging confidence is what slows technological adoption. So mm -hmm. look, is Bitcoin a better form of money? 100%. Is Bitcoin a better form of gold? 100%. Is Bitcoin the future of value transaction? 100%, right? Having a source of truth on chain as opposed to trust in intermediary financial institutions is a superior model. It, it just is. It's as superior yeah. as you and I using the internet to communicate instead of smoke signals or the old landline telephone, right? This is superior. Um, yeah, for sure. Although I don't like the fact that it's HD. I look better in like, you know, you know fuzzy. <laughs> Um, but, uh, I, I do worry that, that we need confidence to come back. We need some, some trusted parties, you know, people with good reputation to really get out in front. Uh, you know, I, I urge the gem, the, the Winklevoss twins to take that role, uh, trustworthy guys, you know, smart guys, um, you know, they're the victims here. If you think about what happened to them, right. You know, Genesis. Yeah welched on on the loan right okay you could argue that gemini made a risk management mistake by having counterparty risk that was too concentrated you sure. could make that argument i i probably wouldn't but you could um and and full disclosure like we're we're owners i mean we're not big owners but we're owners um but i i like those guys and i think they are the types of people that could really do a good job helping to engender trust um yeah. because they're just well there's smart. yeah there's yeah there and there's a couple of, of of you know i think industry leaders if you look at kathy wood you know she's been able to kind of somewhat frame around in in essence at least the, at least the investment crowd now granted she recently did a little bit of a dump here on gbtc but moved it into Coinbase stock. So, I mean, she, her, her faith is still there within crypto. She still believes heavily in what happens uh, within decentralized finance yep. and how that's going to go forward. So I'm still uh, on the good well, I side don't, of, I don't give of where her, she's going. I don't give her, I mean, I don't, I don't rail on her that much for that, for that particular trade because um, it's just math, right? She did a math yeah. exercise. Yeah, uh, for sure. You know, the, the discount in GBTC doesn't look like it's going to close anytime soon. Mm -hmm. And so what you're going to get in GBTC is the movement in Bitcoin. And we can all have an estimate of where we think Bitcoin's going. You do the math. Coinbase was different. Coinbase had been pummeled from, you know, tax loss selling and a whole bunch of other, uh, you know, people throwing the babies out with the bathwater and, and people spreading FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt about their reserves and comparing them to, you know, a speculative company like Celsius, where there was a token, or FTX, where there was a token. There's nothing similar about Coinbase and, and those other entities in that regard. Um, yes, they're an exchange. Yes, you know, it's not your keys, not your coins. But, but I believe CFI has a role for people who don't want to deal with with the, the hardest elements of, of, you know, the new age of 
of uh, yeah. decentralized finance. But but Bitcoin or Coinbase got super undervalued. I mean, relative mm-hmm. to their earning power, relative to the cash on their balance sheet. I mean, it was basically selling it maybe sub one times revenues. I mean, crazy net net cash. Um, so I, I don't gra- and look. What's Coinbase up year to date? Fifty eight percent, something like that. Yeah, so pretty good. Trade. Well, you know, Armstrong, he's done some interesting things. You know, he's made some hard decisions with Coinbase in general. He yep. was one of the first one to do layoffs, but at the same time, their innovation side and what they've done with Wallet, what they've done with converting their more yep. advanced trading NFTs. tool into yep, exactly NFTs, uh, their advanced trading tool into kind of the general uh, solution. So it made it easier for onboarding and better, I think, for most people using Coinbase. Which I think is why uh, Kathy has really kind of got behind this stock. It's going to be one to watch. I still think Coinbase overall between Gemini and Coinbase, they're kind of neck and neck in, in terms of uh, viability for kind of this next iteration of adopters. Yeah, Coinbase definitely has space. the lead. Co- yeah. Coinbase is, is, is the big daddy. Um, I, again, I believe Gemini has a chance to compete with them mm-hmm. um, as being a trusted American company. Right. Um, but they got, they got some work to do. And, and look, Brian has executed extremely well to your point. Um, yeah, you know, we're, we're investors there too. Um, we, we held a bunch of our shares post IPO, which has mm-hmm. been painful, uh, mm-hmm. much better lately, but you know, we, <laughs> we didn't sell at, at the top. Um, but, uh, we, we believe in the company. We believe in, in the vision of the business and, and yet, you know, I'm I'm as as positive ab- about the Bitcoin Maxi story, which is at some point, you know, we we all won't need centralized exchanges right. and and these trusted third parties. But in the short run, I think we do. And I I, I could debate, you know, the Maxis all day on this. Who say, nope, you you got to cut the cord. You got to you got to rip off the bandaid. <laughs> you got to go. My 84 year old yeah. dad is never, ever, ever, ever going to hold his own keys, and I'm yeah, not well, holding listen, them for you because know, I mess and it you're up. Right. And you're right. There trouble. has to be. There's such a large uh, amount of the population that we are going to see coming into the space, and you're right. There, unless we see major improvements in the tech and the UX, the ability for us, us to kind of, it, I don't see it in this next bull run. Possibly in the the following one, maybe, it where might, we get some solidity. Look, Again, it's another portfolio company. I hate to keep plugging portfolio companies, but you know, you, you're, you're, and and this was not rehearsed. You're just, you're just setting me up. Ledger, yep. right? Ledger Love has it. announced the Stacks, and the Stacks product is beautiful. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's elegant. Um, it has functionality that is, is kind of next level. Now, the one that's coming out after the Stacks is even Huge. better. Yeah. Um, but the Stacks is going to onboard a lot of people. I mean, today Ledger holds twenty percent. Of crypto, I mean, it's mm-hmm. an unbelievable stat. That's in, that's insane. And, and look, here's the thing: this made the mobile net, right? The yep. browser made the internet, but this device made the mobile net. It made internet always on, ubiquitous. All of us use it every day, all the time, you know, twenty four seven. Well, not when we're sleeping, but uh, so sixteen seven. Um, but the the key is. We need that same functionality for the digital space. And I believe it's not going to be the phone with an enclave. I think they missed their opportunity. I think now it's going to be a hardware security module with some phone functionality. Yeah, I think um, you're right. Yeah. And we talked about I think that, that speculated, but definitely a good move for yeah. Ledger is definitely in the lead on that. Uh, we did a full analysis yeah. on how. They could be, in terms of building an app ecosystem, which is what we'll need in the future for they that. They could be the Apple they're there. Yeah. of Web3, right? I mean, it is certainly possible. It's not guaranteed. But if if they execute, and look, I love Pascal. He's one of my favorite CEOs of all time. I think the guy's super genius. If people are curious. I did a webinar or a podcast with him uh, last year. Awesome on Digital Currents, our, uh, our, our uh, local podcast um, from Morgan Creek. But I look, it's interesting. I, I did a lot of introspection over the holidays. Um, and, you know, part of it was not self-induced, but 
you know, Hurricane Sam induced. You know, mm-hmm. five years ago, I went way down this rabbit hole. I, I kind of pivoted in my career from traditional into uh, decentralized. And, and I believe it, right? I, I believe in the tech. I believe in the solution. I believe in the innovation. Um, but Hurricane Sam and, and the FTX mess kind of rocked my senses a little bit. I thought, all yeah, right, yeah. was this a big enough blow to the ecosystem? And I said, I believe it's coming straight from the top. I believe this is incited by the incumbents, funded Structure. by the incumbents, try to yeah. you know get the disruptors off rail, no different than any other incumbent fights against disruptors. Uh, you know, phone companies tried to outlaw the internet when it was first getting put up. So uh, I get it. But I did a lot of introspection and I came away more convicted about the future. In fact, uh, if people want, read uh, Dara Albright has a blog post from December about decentralization that is so uplifting and so positive. It, it kind of helped me refocus and, and get back to, to the, the fundamentals. And, and I'm more excited, believe it or not, than I, than I was before. Um, not in a, in a crazy speculative way, but in a very sober, very realistic way of saying, uh, I've lived through, just means I'm old, but I've lived through a lot of disruptive periods from computing, right? There were no yeah. personal computers when I was going through college, uh, to the internet, which was not a thing to, you know, having these where everybody's connected 24 seven um, to now having a world where value will transfer on chain with truth, not with trust. Yeah. And yeah. that disruption, it's a $7 trillion a year industry. That's how much is wasted every year by sure. trusted third parties. $7 trillion a year of revenues is a very valuable thing. Yeah, so, for sure. Speaking of those, uh, this will go right to the trusted folks and that being uh, what's happening now within some of the largest banking sectors out there. So we've got now trying to launch uh, a lot of these, JP Morgan, et cetera, you know, Bank of America, all looking at possibly launching a rival uh, digital wallet, which could roll into something around that. But you're seeing the, the whole point is, is that the digital movement of money, especially after the Zelle debacle that happened with Bank of America here recently, but the likelihood is that you're, to your point, structured what's existing out there, whether we there's nefarious actors in play with the FTX scenario or not. The point is, is that a lot of this is now starting to blend together. Major financial institutions starting to understand digital as a whole, whether it's digital currencies and risk assets or if it's some sort of new digital dollar and what that might looks like, look like. When you think about that, um, you know, Mark, and, and kind of the future of these banks, do you feel like they're going to try to recreate the railroad or come in on the railroad that's already here with what we have today? Ah, such a, such a great question. Um, in fact, it's exactly where I was going. So look, uh, the railroad we have today is a railroad, literally, right? It's, yeah. it's metal tracks on a ground and only a certain car runs on it. Mm-hmm. And it's perfectly fine for certain things. I mean, we still have railroads in the United States. They move a few types of goods and services. They move oil because we don't have enough pipelines. But, you know, we don't transport a lot of people on trains anymore. Uh, we don't, de- you know, anything that has to be fast isn't going to go on a railroad. Uh, Swift, ACH, and Fedwire are 70 year old technology. That's ancient. That's yeah. gone. That 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 yeah. needs to be ripped up, and and so my my belief is the banks won't be the winners, the mm. same way that the television companies weren't the winners in streaming. They should have streaming, been, right? Yeah. The television yeah. companies own all the content. How did they lose the content game to streaming? It makes no sense. Well, it's yeah. because well, they wouldn't yeah. give up the old. They wouldn't exactly. give up the good to go for the great. Yeah, and yeah. the banks aren't going to be able to rip up SWIFT. In fact, they're, they're using it as a weapon, right? You saw them yep. cut off SWIFT mm-hmm. access for Binance to try to choke them off. And look, the harder the incumbents fight, 
the less chance they have to win. The more they embrace the new, the better. So if it were me, which is not, right? I'm not in charge of these banks um, and I don't get paid gazillions of dollars a year like, like Jamie. Um, but, you know, they choose to push away and to criticize uh, rather than to embrace and go buy up. If it were, again, if it were me, I'd be buying up the tech, the new rails. I'd be relabeling it my name, my brand, because mm-hmm. I have brand sure. and I yep. would go on into the future. But instead, you know, Jamie gets up at WEF and takes 10 mm-hmm. minutes saying it's a Ponzi scheme. And now everybody was all mad at Jamie. And I was like, no, guys, flip it around. You have arguably one of the most powerful people in the world. You don't have to like him, but you have to acknowledge he's one of the most yep. powerful people in the world. Right? Just you don't have to like him, but he is that. Given a chance, 10 minutes on stage, on TV, in middle of F. He gets his 10-minute slot. He can talk about anything he wants. He can talk about weather. He can talk about football. He can talk about the event. He can talk about Bitcoin. He chose to talk about crypto. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. And now everybody says, no, Joe Kern and pull. It doesn't matter. You Look, when you're on media, you never answer the question. Right? Yeah, you deflect exactly. and redirect. <laughs> right? So Jamie didn't have to talk about Bitcoin. He chose intentionally yeah. to talk about Bitcoin. I will argue... You can judge the quality of an idea by the quality of its detractors. Mm -hmm. If nobody cares about your idea, it's not a good idea. If only low level people who have no power care about your idea, it's probably not a really important idea. If people with power and money and prestige and, and, you know, influence don't like your idea. Oh, you're on to something. Yeah, so exactly. the, the fact that the smartest, most powerful people in the world hate this thing. Hate is a very strong word. Something is You only hate things. You only hate things. Think about this. In your life, what do you hate? You hate things that cause you pain or Mm -hmm. discomfort. And that's what's happening right now is these guys are feeling the heat. I totally agree. So I don't know. It's somewhat obvious. I'm happy to talk about Bitcoin. Exactly. I think now, because you're right, the last few cycles, it has been more of a carnival show and we didn't see the kind of, of... one legislative representation global leadership representation major institutional representation all of that's now at the table all of them every one of them so to me it's just a matter of time before we start to move into this next direction uh mark so i want to run we're we're running short on time but i want to get a couple of things from you um and just your you know i know you're not a trader in the essence of looking at charts but when you look at the markets you know as you guys do when you're making investments things of that nature you think about bitcoin and ethereum right now and you look at Bitcoin running almost uh, 23, or actually hit 23 over the weekend. Do you feel that that 15, 6, 8 was our bottom? Or do you feel like there's a little bit more cushion here left in the Bitcoin market over the next several months as the, as the Fed kind of starts to correct? No, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable saying that was the bottom, right? Interesting. Um, okay. Look, I, I thought the bottom was 17.8 on June 15th. Mm-hmm. I really thought that was the bottom. Right. But I said, I didn't see FTX being a complete fraud. I, that wasn't on my bingo card. So, you know, we lost another couple grand to that. That's yeah. actually pretty good <laughs> when you think about yeah. it. Um, I mean, really, overall, exactly. You're right. This, the result of the lot resilience of, of what we've there seen was, so far is pretty big. There was a lot. There were a lot of good charts that said 10 to 12 was really the the mm-hmm. lower level that we should have hit and we didn't get there. So yeah. Um, now look, GBTC unravels, Tether sure. turns out to be a total fraud. That's a different Dell game. Deltech Bank yeah. is, is yeah. running money for, you know, some crime syndicate. <laughs> yeah, okay. For sure. Um, now we got black swans. Then, then, maybe, <laughs> then maybe 10 to 12 comes into play. But I don't think anything lower than that and, I, and I'm very comfortable saying the 15 was was it, and that, and we're back into spring. Back, I I don't I don't I'm not even sure we're gonna you know head back through the 18 level. I yeah. I I think the best thing to watch is uh, higher lows and higher highs. So as long yeah. as we keep making higher lows, I'm comfortable uh, that we're in a bull bull period. Uh, this was definitely in a, this was definitely a short squeeze, right? The last three weeks, total short squeeze. For sure. Um, now we need, now we need to see signs of accumulation. 
Uh, if we see signs of accumulation, that'll be really, really good. Um, and I said, my belief is April, May is the beginning of the nine month run through right. the having, which yeah. said, I, I will see some I ebbs believe and flows in there for sure. hundred is on the table, right? I, Interesting. I think okay. we're going to add a zero. I think we're going to 10 X the market cap. And, and we're going to, uh, you know, back to that three trillion level and we're heading, we're going to not back to, we're going, going to yeah, the, go the three it. trillion level. <laughs> and I, I think that's coming and yeah. it doesn't have to come tomorrow and it doesn't even have to come next month or even by April, May. I, I think it's, you know, Q1, Q2 of, of next year. And that 24 right. is the yeah. peak before we go back to, yeah. to fall you're, and winter. You're in alignment. Yeah, you're in alignment with uh, with some of our, our bullish uh, analysts that we've had on. Lynn Alden's on there. Uh, we've had, you know, and there's been some. And we've had Macro Alpha on. He's a little bit more uh, neutral to negative or, or bearish. Uh, same thing with Darius Dale. Um, a little bit more neutral, looking toward the end of the year as trying to see maybe the correction at that time. So yeah. I'm kind of in alignment with you. Last question to oh, you. No, the, I pulled the, the big point I want to make. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Yep. No, I said, ahead, the big yep. point I wanted to make that I forgot about earlier was you got the fundamentals on one side and then you have the monetary piece on the other side. And here's the thing, Bitcoin and gold, but because they're both you know one and the same, don't like quantitative tightening. Right. They right. don't like money supply growth shrinking. So mm -hmm. we actually have had in the recent months, the first time in 60 years, six zero, money supply, money supply actually shrink. Interesting. So okay. if, and again, that's capital I, capital F, if, if the Fed follows, see Japan already pivoted. Right. Japan unleashed a tidal wave. I mean, mm -hmm. tidal wave of liquidity. And you look at the yen went from 153 mm -hmm. to 128, like almost instantaneously. I mean, crazy. I mean, Kurodasan is crazy. I mean, the, the dude is I mean, otherworldly when it comes to printing money. So um, I, that, that was first. Second, China has uh, increased their credit impulse yeah. um, starting in kind of May, June of last year. And I think they're going to, you know, unlock from COVID zero. And, and I think they could stimulate half a trilly. I mean, yeah. a big number. So yeah. if, if the Fed follows, then that'll be good. Because the thing that people forget, one Bitcoin is one Bitcoin. We don't price it in Bitcoin, we price it in dollars. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the reason that Bitcoin goes up over time isn't because Bitcoin gets better. It's just a Bitcoin. It's because the dollar's getting worse. And right. so when we're quantitative tightening, the dollar got strong, which meant the price of Bitcoin went down. Now, as the dollar's getting weak, and the dollar's been in free fall, right, since October. I mean, absolute free fall. DXY just getting crucified. Sure. Yeah. And so if the Fed follows through, then I see a big tailwind for Bitcoin, gold, and, and all stores of value. Yeah, for sure. I went to a tweet back in February of 2022 of yours. And this was to look at assets that would make it through the bear market. Most everything that was on your list did. In fact, Avalanche has got some movement now, a lot of new innovation. Solana had a close call, obviously, with the FTX, yep. but they've also rebounded. Uh, Cosmos has been doing fantastic, even DOT to a certain extent has been yep. uh, doing just fine, no problems. Would there be any shuffling of your portfolio here? Do you feel, would you add anything to this list if you were looking at, now I'm gonna go into this yeah, next bull it's, run? that's a great question. So I used, to, I, used to say, I used to say, form your base, Bitcoin, mm -hmm. Avalanche, Solana, Ethereum. Um, I might modify that. I might, I might ditch Solana. I think it was a SAM coin or scam coin a little bit. I, I, think, there was a, I think there was a lot of good development on Solana. I think there's a lot of good projects on Solana, but For unfortunately, sure. I think that was one of the the manipulated. It's not as bad as Serum or FTT or um, right. Oxy or a couple of the others. But so I'd probably take Solana out of there, and I'd probably swap in uh, Polkadot and and Cosmos. So that doesn't make a very good mnemonic, but uh, I'd probably 
pull Solana out of that that six and 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 keep the other five because the the reason I like those five is I'm not sure whether right now we have five protocols that govern the internet. So there's TC, there's IP at the bottom, internet protocol, yeah. and there's TCP IP, and there's FTP, SMTP, HTTP, www. All right. I can argue that on top of Web3 is Bitcoin is the base layer, Filecoin mm-hmm. is FTP, Ethereum is www. And Cosmos, Polkadot, Avalanche, our SMTP, HTTP, I don't know which ones. So we end up with five or six. Or I could make a case, kind of, not as well as the maxis, that it's Bitcoin always, Lightning, L3, L4 that haven't been developed yet, and yeah. who knows on top, and that there is no other L1s. Or I could make the case that Bitcoin, Ethereum, Avalanche, Polkadot, Cosmos, and then we have right. bridges and interconnectivity, interoperability. I'm not smart enough technically, Paul, to, to <laughs> tell you which one of those is going to happen. Well, you made a pretty good so, pick a year ago, so you're doing pretty good. I mean, you held in yeah, some pretty good tokens I, yeah, I there. Mean, it's okay, but look, I think the key to investing in this ecosystem is diversification. Yeah, right? for sure. Don't, don't put all your eggs in one basket. You know, you want to have a, a big chunk in Bitcoin, fine. But if you think about it, if Bitcoin is as successful as we all think it will be, it won't be the best performing. Full right, stop, for sure. Right? Just because it's, it's going to get to the that largest. Point. It's yes. just the law of large yep. numbers, right? You're not going to go from three, actually 400 billion today. You know, even if you go to 4 trillion, that's a 10 bagger. Okay. Mm-hmm. Ethereum at, you know, I don't know what Ethereum is, 180, maybe 200 billion. Uh, if it gets to 4 trillion, that's twice yeah. as much. Yeah. Almost two hundred, so that's almost twice as much. But if 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 Avalanche actually becomes mm, that that's a big intermediate one. layer, or becomes a a bridge to connect, you know, Ethereum and big, I don't know. But it could be, you know, maybe a fifty x. And so I think you want to diversify your portfolio, not to like if you want to speculate on the dog coins. Be sure. my guest. I'm not going to yeah. do it with you. People want to do that. To me, that's literally gambling. Just literally gambling. It's like buying AMC or GameStop. And, and you want to gamble that there's a greater fool? Knock yourself out. <laughs> um, maybe someday there's a developer that does something that Doge and, and Shiba can yeah, do something. Sure. But I don't Who knows? So, yeah. but, but look, change. I got a debate with a guy I really respect and, and admire. Um and he said, no, there's value in memes. I'm like, uh, well, no. <laughs> this I, there's who you're not, talking to. <laughs> but, 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 I, no, but, I, but I, believe, I believe his point, which is it's reflexivity, like Soros mm. said. The fact right. that people believe it makes it so. Mm-hmm. And it is true, right? I mean, it's a 10, what, Dogecoin's a $10 billion asset or $11 billion mm-hmm. asset. Yep. People believe it. Now, the problem is, who would they all sell it to? Yeah, well, that's the question. Liquidity is always going to be the scenario, right? for sure. And so, I mean, it it's, is it's an incestuous pool, for sure. Well, I mean, that is the definition of a Ponzi. Right? The only yeah. way out is to sell yours to somebody else. Maybe mm-hmm. it's not a Ponzi. Maybe it's a multi-level marketing, right? Yeah. As long as you can convince other people to come in, that's what it is. It's more multi-level marketing than Ponzi. And look, Herbal Life's been doing that for a long time. Amway, yeah, for sure. Thing. All right, so we're going to go to the, we're going to get to the poll. Dogecoin is the, the poll. Tupperware of the, oh, there this you age. go. You got some good you got some good uh, plugs in here today, Mark. Mark, All let's right. go over to the poll today and see what the audience says uh, about what we're talking about. All right, which will happen first, Bitcoin to twenty four k or Bitcoin to twenty k? Wow, this is pretty split. Interesting. Thousand votes on this one too. So interesting that we see market. I think I think a lot of people are still in the phase of. Do they believe this run? How long will this liquidity scenario hold on? And two, is are we in a bit of a bull? And as we've talked about here today, in a situation where we're getting a short squeeze starting to play into this. So definitely some good ones. Um, Look, Mark, it's it, always... It, to, to that point, Paul, just to answer the, the, the poll. Yeah. It's highly logical 
highly logical to say uh, we're so overbought mm -hmm. because of this short squeeze that we, we have to have a retracement and 20 is, is likely, all right? Mm -hmm. that, that's a totally logical, in fact, probabilistically, that definitely has a higher probability than even getting to 24. 24 is not very far away, right? Less than a thousand points. Right. Yeah. But probabilistically, uh, I mean, to go from, I'm just going to look up the relative strength real fast. Uh, I can't see it. But I think the relative strength is, is like tapping up on high 70s. It just never gets there. And so yeah. it, it's, a, it's a good probabilistic bet. The fact that less people believe it's going to happen means it's more likely to happen, right? Because it's mm -hmm. inversely correlated to polls. Because um, if you ask people what they expect to happen, that usually doesn't happen. And it's the things that they don't expect. Um, that's why markets are so efficient. So, but, but the point there is that's probably the right um, channel is we've broken out of that 15 to 18 channel and now right. we're in a 20 to 24 channel. And eventually yep. we're going to break out of the 20 to 24 channel. Then we'll be yep. in a 26 to 32 channel. Right. And by summertime, we could easily, easily, you know, be in the 40s and 50s again. And people say, oh, my God, I missed it. Like, yeah. No, it's just getting started at that point. Yeah, sure. So it's, this is interesting, too, because I think a lot of it's what we've looked in terms of the number of analysts that we've talked to over the past uh, few weeks is the tides seem to be shifting here a little bit, more so than what I thought we'd see in mid-January. So FOMC yep. will tell us a lot, you know, obviously in, in yep. kind of the direction of at least what the macros will do. And then to your point, a lot of global aspects, whether it's China, the Bank of Japan, where we've kind of repositioned there, including EU, and what that looks like in the next few months now that we're kind of trending out of winter, which will help the EU's position in terms of energy. All that plays into uh, all of this good stuff. Uh, for you guys, uh, make sure and stick around. We're going to break down some sentiment for you guys on Bitcoin before we get out of here because I promised that. Mark, it all, it's always fun uh, chatting with you. We always get into a, a deep discussion. So it's uh, thanks again for stopping in on today's show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Again, happy Lunar New Year. Uh, enjoy the year of the rabbit, everybody. And uh, <laughs> here's to peace, health, and prosperity uh, as you go out throughout the year. And we'll see you again. All right. Thanks, Mark. All right, so you guys, um, when, and I'm going to try to get to a couple of questions here. I know some of you are, are hitting on a few things. Uh, Bitcoin, of course, as you guys know, um, we're still running right here around the 22.8 zone, which has kind of been a little bit of the sideways. But one thing to watch when you go in and look at our overall sentiment right now, Bitcoin is still trending up. And in comparison to where Ethereum, which started to get a little bit of a softening, this is today's sentiment numbers. Let me jump over to Top Crypto and just give you a quick look at Bitcoin to give you guys uh, a quick analysis there because we are looking at some interesting things happening with Bitcoin and to most of your guys' points is when we start to see this intersection between these two. Now, notice here that you get a little bit of deviation right here. It's still it's still a growing number from a 62 to a 63 uh, 02 on amplification, but the 65 to a 67 uh, is a very strong position. So right now, as it stands today, Bitcoin is still trending up. Could we hit 23? Sure, we could bump it again. Start to see some early weak movement. But at the same time, I'm still cautious right now because we aren't seeing uh, amplification run the same way. But if you look at Ethereum, starting to dip down, both top line and also for amplification. The difference here, Ethereum is outperforming overall market. So that is something that we're watching. One of the things that we've done and if you're in our, our uh, mastermind group or you're in our CPI where you get this, uh, we talk a lot about these kinds of things. But um, watching those top line sentiment uh, elements when we do these kind of shows and break this down for you guys, these are the things that we're going to try to get into. Uh, I know a ton of questions today. We went long. Uh, we will get try to get to as many of those as one. If you guys hit me up on Twitter, I'll try to answer some of your questions there. And if you're in you know, some of our groups, of course, hit me up in those, in those chats as well. If you're not in the diamond circle, get in there. We have some big news for you coming soon. Uh, you guys are going to love it. Uh, and all you have to do is just join. It's an email list and off you go. If you guys want to reach me, it's out there on Twitter at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.